In 2019, Matthew Bowling ran the fastest 100 meter dash in high school history, coming in at 9.98. This race went viral online, resulting in millions of views on YouTube, hundreds of thousands of new followers, and tons of new fans around the country. That same year, he competed in the USATF, which includes high school and college athletes, and he won both 100 and 200 meters with a significant lead. Later that year, he won four gold medals in four different races, breaking world records in both relay races for the under 20 division. This was a huge moment in his career because this time he went against the best in the world, not just in his country. Since then, he's been consistently setting new records in various competitions. And let's call it for what it is. It is a bit shocking to see him dominating in a sport that is really dominated by someone who looks like him. With that being said, the numbers don't lie, and Matthew Bowling, for sure, is on track to be a superstar in this sport. Hey, what's going on? It's Caesar, and welcome to The Sprint Project. While there are plenty of other great sprinters at the moment, like Noah Lyles and Terrence Laird, there's been a lot of hype around Matthew Bowling the last few years. Although I'm not a competitive sprinter, and I use it more for the mental, physical and health benefits, I wanted to see what the hype was about and what there is to learn from him. So in this video, we're gonna analyze some of his best races, take a sneak peek into his training program, reveal what his dad has to say about his upbringing, and discuss what his chances are at the Olympics this year. Let's get into it. First, let's take a look at some of his best races to this date starting with the NCAA championships. One thing I noticed, he is able to stay low to the ground, just as low, if not lower, than his shorter competitor. The lower you are to the ground, the more your body will travel forward on each step compared to being upright. This is something that becomes harder to do as you are taller. However, he is able to do so, and maybe the reason he comes off strong in his acceleration. The last thing I noticed is that towards the end of the race, he is struggling to stay relaxed. Meanwhile, Terrence looks like he's just chilling. For this reason, he catches up to bowling to the point where they are shoulder to shoulder. And from what I see at this point, they were tied and they came down to that lean at the finish line. What this tells me is that bowling is a finisher. Many people in this situation would have lost concentration as they see the guy behind him now standing shoulder to shoulder. Yet he didn't let this break his focus and executed that lean with flawless precision. All right, now let's check out his four x four relay in 2019. When I saw this race, I realized, okay, this kid is a monster. How far back do you think he is right here? If you're familiar with track distances, comment below, how many meters behind do you think he is right at this point? To me, this looks like a 40 meter lead. And seconds later, he eats that race and takes the win. The fact that he takes the lead at the end, about 30 meters out from the finish line, tells me that he stole the lead based on his speed endurance. Typically, when we hear the word endurance, we think about running for a long distance or boxers training to fight for long matches. The way I've come to understand speed and endurance now is that it's your ability to maintain a very high speed through a race which may only last a few seconds. So at this point, it may seem like he's speeding up at the end to catch up with the person in first place, but this is only an illusion. And in reality, at this point, everyone is slowing down. Matt Bowling is not speeding up. He's just slowing down less than the other guy. In this freeze frame, look at the guy in first place. The face says a lot, and in this case, he's exhausted. And now compare that to Matt Bowling's face. He looks much more relaxed. Then if you play the clip, we can see that his technique is falling apart quickly. Matt Bowling's technique falls apart too, just less than the other guy. This will support the theory that because he has amazing speed endurance, he's able to keep his form from significantly falling apart, allowing him to travel further on each step. Not further than earlier in the race, just further on each step than the guy in the lead, resulting in this huge comeback, which also went viral online. Now let's take a look at the 100 meter race that put him on the map as the fastest high school kid. In this race, I counted that he took 44 steps to cross the finish line. The guy right behind him, I counted, took 45, which may not sound like a lot, but one whole step of a difference means that his steps were longer than everyone else in that race. Not to mention that 45 steps was the guy right behind him. 
The ones further back took even more steps. On average, in the Olympics, it takes an elite sprinter 44 steps across the finish line. Usain does it in 41, and this is what that looks like. It's possible that the length of Matt Bowling steps is one of the reasons why he's so fast. Finally, let's talk about the Clemson Invitational of 2021. In that same meet, he ran the 60 meter dash in 6.64 seconds taking the win and also setting a new personal record. For reference, this is 60 meters of a track and this is 400. He's smoking people in both of these, which from my understanding are at the opposite extremes of sprinting. This is almost like a boxer fighting the featherweight division, knocking out the guy and then going into the heavyweight division and then knocking them out as well. Technically, it's still the same sport. However, your strategy, training and body type are typically gonna be optimized differently. For example, Usain Bolt wasn't known for having the best starts. He was known for dominating towards the end of the race. Bowling, on the other hand, seems like he has potential to be strong in both the early and later phase of the race. Now let's take a closer look at his weight and his height. Online it says he weighs 171 pounds. In comparison, Noah Lyles, who currently holds the world record for the fourth fastest time in the 200 meters, weighs 154 pounds. You could say that this is an advantage for Noah Lyles over Matt Bowling, although this doesn't take into consideration the muscle mass, which may accompany the additional weight which Bowling has. In high school, he was already six feet tall. That's even taller than Noah Lyles, but shorter than the number one 200 meter world record holder, Usain Bolt. This actually puts him in a sweet spot where he's not short, but he's also not super tall either. Both of which have their disadvantages. Because everyone is slowing down at the end of a race, if a shorter sprinter is side by side with someone taller who is taking bigger steps, assuming they're both slowing down at the same speed, the taller sprinter is gonna win by default because of the larger steps. In contrast, a taller sprinter is gonna struggle with their starts and here's why. Because everyone is starting the race with zero momentum, the faster you can put your leg on the ground, the faster you will be able to build up your speed. A taller sprinter due to the longer length of their legs is gonna take a bit more time to put their leg into the ground and build up their speed compared to a shorter sprinter who is already closer to the ground naturally and has shorter legs which can move faster. Although Matthew Bowling may not have the advantages that come with being short or super tall, he doesn't have the disadvantages that come with them either. And that itself may be the biggest advantage of all, which could explain the reason he's able to dominate in shorter races and longer races. But look, I'm not a track coach and some of you watching might have much more insight than I do. If you do, let us know in the comments what your theories are on what makes him so fast. Now let's examine his training. In this article, his head coach said that he's gotten physically stronger, spending more time in the weight room. In that same article, his dad, Mark Bowling, talks about the fact that Matt competed seriously in Taekwondo before track all the way down to a black belt. They believe that this has played a major role in his work ethic and also gave him a lot of the confidence when he entered the sport of track and field. I can certainly see how that huge confidence boost can give him a huge advantage over the other kids who may have little to no experience in competing, especially in a sport like track where you have seconds to perform and very little room for mistakes. He also competes in the long jump where he recently broke a school record, ranking number 13 in the world. As research has shown, jumping power and sprinting speed are closely related. Reason being, if you can jump further off the ground, your leg will be able to push further on each step in the sprint. Although jumping is already a core part of elite sprint training, it's possible that his long jump training added on top of his existing sprint training is giving him an added advantage, which could explain why he was able to break the high school record in 2019 with less steps than everyone else. In this 2019 clip, his training is outlined, which consists of a 400 meter with eight to 12 minute rest, 300 meter two by 200 with 30 to 60 second rest in between. His 400 meter pace seems to be at 52 seconds. His 300 meter pace was 36 seconds and 200 meter pace was 24 seconds. In this training footage from March, 2021, his workout consists of 600 meter sprints with 90 second rest intervals in between. The cameraman asks about his training schedule and it looks like this.
Now, of course, this isn't the most detailed outline of his program, but we can't really expect him to give away all the sauce behind his record-breaking speed. Now let's talk about his chances at the Olympics this year. Let's take a look at some of his biggest competitors in the US. Specifically, in terms of the 200 meters, they are Noah Lyles, who, as I mentioned earlier, currently holds the fourth fastest 200 meters with a time of 9.50 seconds. Then there's Terence Laird, who took first place at the indoor 200 meter final with a time of 20.28. Also, there's Joseph Van Boule, hopefully I'm not pronouncing that wrong, but I probably am, who ran a 20.32 in that same race. There's a lot of potential for what these guys can do in the outdoor season because indoor times are typically one second slower than outdoors, which we can see by these numbers. Of course, we can't forget Michael Norman, who currently has a personal best of 1970 in the 200 meters and has a lot of potential to make the Olympic team this year. It's safe to say, as of right now, anything can happen. Do you think Matt Bowling is gonna make the Olympic team this year? Comment below. And ultimately, while most of us may not be aspiring Olympic sprinters, the work ethic, the intense desire to win, and the willingness to pursue passions, even if they're outside our comfort zone, are qualities which most of us can apply to our own lives. If you wanna learn more about beginner sprint drills, click here. If you wanna learn more about sprinting mistakes to avoid, click here. Like the video if you find it helpful. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next 